Hi, I am Ben Pingle. I teach visual communication at Washington State University, and I'm really, really excited to share with you a little bit about one of my favorite projects and one of my uh, students' favorite projects as well. Um, so this is the Boring Image Project, where we learn um, some really awesome and exciting tools in Photoshop. And the reason that I want them to learn Photoshop is that Photoshop is an industry standard tool. Um, as I have talked to various professionals in the industry of graphic design, of web design, um, and throughout the er different areas of visual communication, um, I ask the question, do students need to know Adobe? And the answer always comes back is yes. And so I really try to make sure that we have Photoshop built in to our curriculum for visual communication courses along with other um, awesome Adobe tools and other tools that are out there. You know, Photoshop actually started in 1988 with a couple of brothers who put a program together and then Adobe picked up the licensing in 1990. So for 30 years now we've been using Adobe, Adobe Photoshop and it's a great program, it's really evolved and through that process has become industry standard. Um, I myself bought Creative Suite 2 when it first came out uh, back in the day while I was working on my undergrad and uh, soon, uh, just a couple days after I bought that, it, um, they came out with uh, Adobe Photoshop or Creative Suite 3 and so uh, we hurried and called in Adobe and they said, oh, okay, here, we'll send you a free copy. So I've been using it for a long time and I really enjoy the program. Um, and it really is just has developed and evolved so much um, by adding new features all the time. You know, just recently at Adobe Max, they introduced several new exciting features um, that my students have already had a lot of fun trying out and exploring. So although Photoshop is very complex, it can also be a very fun and engaging tool. Um, as students sit down that first time, just that look of horror as they um, try to figure out the different tools and where to go. And so I always try to make sure I'm very pointed and guided. These are the specific tools that we want to learn for this project. Um, and then as we do several projects, it expands and they start to feel comfortable with what they're doing. So with this project, what I want them to do is learn how to use some of the more advanced cutting out and things like that. And I give them, the idea of the project is that I give them a uh, boring image. I actually edit a background and I um, to make it even more boring and then I ask them to use specific tools to go and create something new and exciting. My objectives as I go through this are to learn several advanced features, cutting out, masking, blending, layer styles, selections. Um, you can add more of course but those are some of the basics that I start with on this project. At this point in my course this is usually their second project in Adobe Photoshop. Now, I also want them to play with typography and get creative with that and learn how to do different things. And then we also want them to tell a story and not just slapping several images together, but really have some fun with this. So this is an example of one of the boring images that we start with. It really has nothing in it. I actually went and edited out the sky and I grayed out some of the colors to make it less appealing and exciting. Um, this was just in the field five minutes from my house. Um, you can use a variety of images to start with. There are a whole bunch of boring images online. Um, the key is I like to have a focal point of some kind, which is the road in this case. Um, I've used other trails and things like that too. Um, but you can use all sorts of different images. And the, the work that our students come up with is absolutely stunning. So as you look at some of these here, um, you can see how they have just had such a variety and they really get creative and no two projects are ever the same. And I will say time and time again, they just look completely different than I would ever expect. Um, things that I just did not anticipate and they put it together in just amazing and creative ways. And something that I also love seeing is how engaged they end up with this project. Um, as we as we ask for feedback every semester, uh, we hear all sorts of different things, but consistently we hear how fun this project is, how they love being creative and using their imaginations. And what I love about this is they're learning, uh, they're getting all of our learning outcomes in the course and don't even know it. Um, they're just having fun while they do this. Now, as you go through this and adapt the assignment in different ways, you can, um, you can choose different themes if you wanted to. So if you wanted to help address mental health issues surrounding COVID, uh, if you want to um, help them define their future vision of success, 
You can address social issues. You can choose all sorts of different themes. You can choose your tools that you want them to focus on, be it text-based or image manipulation um, and getting into some of the liquefaction and things like that. You can learn uh, new tools like the Sky Replacement. Um, other things that we uh, really have enjoyed um, with this is the opportunity for additional lesson topics. So if you want to discuss ethical concerns um, around the image editing, this is the perfect time and be able to discuss this with them when it's okay to edit an image and when it's not. Um, this is also a great time where we get into copyright and we discuss with them you know, what images are okay to use and what images are not. So um, I hope you'll take a minute and check out some of our students' work. Um, if you go on Twitter and just search the hashtag COM210, you'll see all of our students' work. We have our students post there um, because our university administration tends to see it a little bit more. Um, and it's a great way for us to be able to share their work. So we invite you to go and check out some of the things they've done. And I would love to connect with you. Um, if you're doing something similar to this or have other ideas, um, and if you end up using this project, I'd love to see uh, what your students come up with too. So please feel free to reach out to me at ben.pingle at wsu.edu or on Twitter at Ben Pingle.